We've had a bit of a week. Monday. We were here. We were ready. We were going to be recording. Everything was on on schedule to be like normal. But then, fire. Um, what th- th- what ha- What did the power uh, poles? Yeah, about like six thirty, our power just went out. And no, not even six thirty. It was earlier than that. What time yeah, was it? It was like six, like five. five yeah. yeah. And I was like, well, tonight. And sometimes our power will blink and come right back on. So at first I didn't think anything of it, but once it was getting on like half an hour, I'm like, I better say something to Nash. And we're like, what's going on? Like, why is the power out? And then we looked, our neighborhood has a Facebook group and somebody had a picture that I put on Twitter of a whole power pole just on fire. Fire. Yeah. Ground to wires, just not flames. not just a little. Let me. I gotta find that picture because it's not just a little fuego. fire. Any fuego. It's not just a little fire. It's it's it a is, lot of fire. So yeah, that that yeah. happened on Monday, and that's not something yeah. they can just go you know, come out and fix. That's the whole pole no. needs to be. We finally got power back sometime after nine, which was would have been. Midnight we, here. We yeah. got power back around when I would have needed to be on the air, but like, yeah. how we're, there was no planning for that. So. We also weren't entirely sure we can go out again. <laughs> right. So that was Monday. And then yesterday was Tuesday. And my entire internet decided it wanted to be dial up speed. I was having like, I had 500 down because we, we have 500 megabits down. And we're supposed to have 50 up. I pay for 50 up because I need the upstream for to do this. Um, I had 0.4. Yikes. Out of That's 50. Bad. That is very bad. And we, I literally could not do the show last night. And then today it was fine. Like nothing fucking happened because fuck me, I guess. What if we had to do the show on Wednesday because the multiverse fucked us? Uh, Dan's got some good news. Dan got very good news. Yes. Um, yeah, so for anybody that wasn't seeing on, on, on Twitter, uh, they do a tumor marker test on me every two chemo sessions, and, like, the first one was 115, normal is 0 to 35. The second one was significantly lower at 42, so only 7 points out of range, and the one they did yesterday, day before yesterday, was 26. So, my tumor is dying which is makes me very happy the ct scan they couldn't tell that the tumor had shrunk any just because they they're starting to think maybe it's just scar tissue around it but they're wanting me to do more chemo to just make absolutely sure but i also feel way better than i ever have after any chemo session and um we're starting to think that the diabetes that i had was actually a symptom because my blood sugar pretty much runs normal and i don't have to do a lot to make it stay normal so we're also theorizing that because he was in the chemical core in the army, <laughs> yeah. maybe that's why he's doing so good with the chemo because they are oh, just just into so much crap up. that he's just getting superpowers. So uh, I'm just going to do this to reset my light because chemo I is turn my ke- head. Chemo is curing your diabetes. This is a while. Yeah. <laughs> so oh, and this is all and over. The oncologist you- said that. The oncologist said that could be the case, that the tumor was making his pancreas not work. And that's why I got diabetes three months before I was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. So, so well, 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 yeah, when, when this is all over, you can get back to uh, whiskey. That'd be great. Yeah. Each week, Catherine goes out on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff. In fact, here, from the segment we like to call. What the fuck is wrong? With you? Now we're we're gonna start with a follow up on the first one, just real briefly covering this. But it made me so happy. Long this is one of one of the favorite my favorite things has ever happened over the course of this show. Ever it was it was a beautiful moment for me, for you, for everyone. We all we all came together for this because it was amazing, and we loved it. And uh, can you believe it was eight years ago? Eight years ago, 
one little monkey oh. <gasps> wandered yeah, into an I- Ikea <laughs> and into our hearts. Yeah, Ikea monkey, that was, uh, that, wow. was a, that was eight years ago. Seemed like that long. Apparently he's doing fine. He's all, he's all grown up. And uh, he's, he's, uh, he's in a uh, sanctuary with the other macaques, and he has a uh, Curious George doll. Uh, he got so big. Does he that. still have his smart little coat? No. They, 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 he doesn't oh. have to coat it. But that was just a wonder, just a weird and wonderful day, and all this weird bullshit that I normally have to contend with. All out of nowhere, there's just there's this fucking monkey in the Ikea. Yeah. And it was wonderful. And we loved it. And gosh darn it, it was fantastic. He has a curious George doll? Yep. That's so cute. Mm-hmm. Now let's get to the shitty stuff. Um, Can't we just stay with, stay with the monkey? monkey? No, we can't. Um, so this one kind of went everywhere. Uh, it's, it's, it's a little bit of a, a little part horrible human being a little part do you know who i am and a little part catharsis all rolled into one uh i think you might have might have heard about this one passengers gross comments after allegedly groping cabin crew um (sighs) ohio man maxwell barry 22 is facing three counts of battery after saturday's incident on frontier airlines flight from philadelphia to miami um Police will allege Mr. Barry inappropriately touched two female flight attendants and physically assaulted a male attendant, which led to him being restrained in his seat for the remainder of his flight. And by restrained, they (laughs) duct taped his ass to the seat. Good. Yeah, I, I, I hope they ripped all the hairs out of his arms. If you have to be duct taped to your seat, you have fucked up. Yeah. You you have completely fucked up. Yeah, if the flight attendants are breaking out the duct tape and MacGyvering your ass. And just a little cherry on top. Quote, you guys fucking suck. My parents are worth more than $2 million. My grandpa is worth more than your fucking life. So they already have you duct taped to your seat and you've decided the correct move is antagonism. Yeah. Also, I mean, not that I'm a very extremely wealthy person, but $2 million isn't really a lot of money anymore. It's, it's not. I mean, to all of us, yes, that would be a lot of money. But like to rich people, my father's worth $2 million doesn't mean that much. You know the terrible thing? All the, all the, all the, uh, the, the financial folks say uh, you need to have at least $1 million to retire. Yeah. And that's not even like that's not even like super retire. That's just like you can you can pay keep the lights on every month while you're old. You can like you can like eat. Yeah, eat food and and live in a house. So, uh, yeah, so they 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 duct taped your ass down. Um, As they should. Yeah, it was. I did get taken in by the video that was supposedly the flight attendant. I know that guy's been going that around. That was actually a, lot. a comedian. Yeah, I got taken in by it. It was still very funny, it was. even if it wasn't really that guy. It was. All right, so that was, yeah, that that, fuck this guy. You got he's getting arrested. I mean, you're getting charged with shit. I mean, he's from Philly, so is anybody surprised? Yeah. <laughs> Because what do I always tell you? Philly sports fans are fucking savages. <laughs> and he's a generic white dude. I promise you he's a sports fan. <laughs> okay. Uh, I mean, that $2 million, that'll basically cover his bail. Goodbye, money. 
All right. Um, yeah, that'll cover like the loyal lawyer fees. So the, the anti-vaxxers are driving me nuts. They're driving us all nuts, right? Uh, now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and it it's bad. I always say this. It's bad enough that they're so so completely wrong. It doesn't help that they're also so fucking stupid. Anti-vaccine. So confident. Anti-vaccine protest storms the BBC years after it moved out. (laughs) Confused anti-vax protesters stormed what they thought was a major BBC building on Monday. Apparently unaware the corporation largely moved out almost a decade ago. Rather than target the BBC's news operation, which they hold responsible for promoting vaccines, the coronavirus vaccines, a handful of protesters gained access to Television Centre in West London, which is now predominantly rented by ITV, who film its daytime shows such as Good Morning Britain and This Morning. Um, they also film a show. This is what I, I kind of, I, I, I don't, Britain gets away with a lot of shit we wouldn't over here. They do a show that's like The View. Only they call it Loose Women. Wow. And it's The View. I mean, but I mean, Fox has outnumbered. But so what happened was, the, all right, Television Center was like from the 60s, from when the BBC was really, really big. Television Center was where the BBC was famously located. But like they said, in about 2013, they finally left that for newer, more modern facilities. And there are two things left here now. There are some studios that ITV uses. And ITV is not the BBC, totally different network. And there's some apartments there. They, they converted some of it to apartments. So this crowd of imbeciles who don't even know where the fuck anybody is showed up to protest Strictly Come Dancing. <laughs> How do you get that? For, like 10 years. It's not like they moved no, right. out six months ago. Right. How do you get that so wrong? Like you got to try to be that wrong. Well, they did. I just was the organizer like actually pranking them. Was this like an Ashton Kutcher situation? Um, Cause that would be funny. Among the individuals outside was Pierce Corbin, brother of the former Labor Party leader, who was recorded on one live stream as saying, we've got to take over these bastards. All the individual in the protest described the media as, quote, the virus and criticized the BBC's coverage. You know, no, you see, there actually is a virus. It's yes. not. I mean, say what you will about the BBC. There is a virus and that's not it. If if you are so ill-informed, you don't know where the people you're protesting are. Maybe you should revisit. Just consider shutting the fuck up. Ask your doctor if shutting the fuck up is right for you. Maybe just take the day off. From being a fucking idiot. Jeremy Corbyn's brother. He just, you know, that Jeremy Corbyn was watching this like, oh, God. Can you imagine being like any other member of that family? (laughs) And just being like, Jesus fucking Christ. Like, first we had Brexit. Was that him? No, that was Farage. Yeah, but but Corbyn was the one who completely fucked it up. At least on labor. Yeah. Like, can you imagine being like their niece or nephew? And seeing this shit on TV and you have that last name and someone's like, are you related to the? No, 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 not me. Somebody else. Coincidence. (sighs) It's weird. Well, let's come back to our own hellhole here in America, which is called Florida. Um, This is pure fucking nightmare fuel. This we remember uh, a couple of weeks back, we had the dude. Suddenly there was a snake in his fucking toilet. Yeah. All right. Let's let's up that ante. Florida man goes to brush teeth 
and finds iguana in the bathroom toilet. Trip to the bathroom took a terrifying turn for one Florida man after he found a spiny tailed iguana in his toilet. Dangerous. Yeah, yeah, this is the aggressive one. Uh, he went to the bathroom oh, and brushed his teeth. I was going to say, iguanas are at least kind of cute. Um, went to, to brush his teeth, spotted a disturbing sight out of the corner of my eye. It was so big that it was not submerged completely in the water. It's got that tail that whips back and forth. Hollywood resident uh, said he initially decided to take matters in his own hands by dressing in protective gear and attempting to pull the iguana from the toilet bowl by himself. No, that's where we get to the Florida part of this story. Yeah. Anybody else, your ass would have clocked that bathroom, not gone near it, called animal control, maybe gone outside, considered moving. You would have got Zillow out. Yeah. Not, not Kurt, not Kurt. He, 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 he girded himself for battle. <laughs> I want to know what protective clothing meant. <laughs> like, oh, I better put a shirt on for this. <laughs> However, every time Hillworth went to do so, the reptile kept swimming back down the toilet, ultimately evading capture. It wasn't until three days later that Hilbert realized he would need to call an expert. So, after three days of an iguana in the goddamn toilet, then he called. I sincerely hope this man has more than one bathroom. <laughs> There's no way to tell, Tara. There, there is literally no way of telling. Because you know what I'm saying, right? Like, <laughs> you can't hold it for three days. <laughs> I mean, and I know that there are men who pee in the shower because men were a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes other things have to happen, too. And if you're doing that in the shower, do me a favor and just go into the sea. Well, Tara, that's why God invented buckets. Oh. <laughs> no, I just, they, they, yeah, they, they got the iguana out, although he did lose his tail because they do, because lizards do that, but they got him out. Yeah, the spiny-tailed iguana does tend to be more aggressive. It's quicker to bite and shouldn't be handled. So if he'd not been paying attention and gone in and sat down on the toilet, that iguana would have gotten a big hunk of the butt. But I, I just love that the, 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 nobody in this, in this story is like, oh, wow, three days, that's perfectly... You would have had an iguana. In, there was an iguana in your toilet for three yeah. days. I mean, also, clearly, this man doesn't have cats. Because as people with cats, I think you and I both know. Yeah. You quarantine that bathroom. Yeah. And you call animal control immediately, because otherwise you're going to have Godzilla versus cats. Yeah. On a very small scale. And is there a Godzilla monster with the cat? I don't think so. No. Not really. There should be. Eh, maybe you're going to have like a Godzilla Thundercat mashup in your bathroom, except not fun at all. Kurt, dude, my dude, if there's an iguana in the toilet, you call immediately. That's an iguana in your that's a wild fucking reptile in your guy. That is a vestige of dinosaurs in your fucking toilet. Pretty much anything bigger than like this that gets into your home. You should call somebody to deal with it. Yeah, because I mean, I, I, we there's a fuck. There was a fucking gecko in our house about this big, running fucking around. I'm like, I gotta catch that because Grady will eat it. I couldn't catch the fucker. But if it had if been you like, can't throw a shoebox over it, <laughs> you need to call somebody. Uh, uh, I know it's a good rule. Well, m m more just oh my god. This has happened before and it will happen again. All of this has happened before. This is fucking David Lynch bullshit going on here. 
Florida <laughs> again. Um, this is this is embarrassing. Even for I I admire his hooks his his, his chutzpah, his moxie, if you will. I admire that. However, his balls. His balls. Yeah, I admire that. However, it. Florida man with trespassing warrant claims to be FBI agent during the county traffic stop. And and 33 year old David. He kind of does look like. No, he doesn't look like the FBI agent from Sons of Anarchy. Who am I thinking of? Anyway. 33 year old Davy man was arrested on Sunday for allegedly impersonating a law enforcement officer, Sean Haynes, allegedly caused a disturbance at a public supermarket left on a moped. So we're already fairly dignified at this point. Yeah. Haynes was pulled over shortly after the disturbance on a moped and claimed to be an agent of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. He even provided deputies with a false badge number with identification during the stop. Turns out Haynes was not an FBI agent but rather a man with a warrant out of Broward County for trespassing. Okay. They he was got... watching a lot of Supernatural, and he was like, look, if those motherfuckers can get away with it in an Impala... You don't have I'm Bobby! Why are going to be on a moped? You can't get... You need... No. You gotta have Bobby. You cannot... That is an essential component. You cannot pretend to be law enforcement without... You need a Bobby. If you don't have a Bobby... Yeah. You... People who have never watched Supernatural are like, what the fuck is he talking? I don't know what? what. Um, I admire. Or he's like, all right, I'm in a corner here. I'm going to. I'm getting arrested either way. I've got a warrant out. Let's see what. Let's let's throw it at the wall and see what sticks. Let's go for broke. I admire swinging for the fences, but just you've already gotten in trouble for for fucking up in the publics. Okay. You're causing a disturbance in the grocery store. You're interfering with the produce. And you make your getaway on a motorized bicycle, a moped, if you will. I don't think they're going to believe you're under deep cover. What were you, <laughs> what, what, what were you supposed to be? Are you undercover? I, uh, in I'm investigating... The moped street racing underground I, I, that you have here in Florida. No, sir, you're not. Are are you in the the in, the embarrassing asshole unit? Is that is is that in the in the FBI? They have that because you're an embarrassing asshole, my friend. I oh, was just two weeks from retirement. Well, you know what? There there was it could have worked. Like maybe one in a billion chance. You don't know until you I try. I mean, if you get just the fucking Gomer pile of the police force and they're like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to bother you. Maybe. You, you know, know, like. You, you know, you, bet, you, you know why he tried this? Because it might have worked before. I have a friend, Nathan, and he used to say when you used to do rock, paper, scissor at LARP, he loved that system because everybody has a 33% chance to kill the Justicar. You never know. Might be the day and that you throw the bomb. People also have no idea what we're talking about right now. We're old gamers. It's what we did. Yeah. All right. Okay, next up, this is... Oh my god, you are lucky to fucking be alive, you fucking moron. This, this, uh, again, from the department of this fucking keeps happening. Did something go up somebody's butt? No. <laughs> well, okay. someone's head went up their butt. Jaguar at Florida <laughs> Zoo injures man who climbed barrier. <gasps> taunted animal. No, kitty. A man was See, injured. See, I feel bad for the kitty. Yeah. A man was injured by a jaguar at a Florida zoo after climbing over a barrier and moving too close to the animal's enclosure. The attack occurred Wednesday. He's fine. The man was hospitalized with non-life-threatening injuries. 
Man climbed over a waist-high safety barrier that puts four feet of empty space between visitors and the Jaguar exhibit's fence. The man then began For a reason! He began taunting the Jaguar and reached his hand through the fence. Twelve-year-old big cat named Harry swiped at the man and injured him. I, I... He would do that! What did... <laughs> what the fuck did... What was the outcome you were expecting? Peggy couldn't kill you. Harry could fucking kill you. Like, what was he expecting? You know, the, 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 the was he, I, I can fuck you up. Come over here. I'll show you. Oh, I bet you're scared. I bet you're fucking scared. Do you think you could fucking stare down a fucking Jaguar? He, de he doesn't care. And like, I, we, we went to this zoo down in Colorado Springs to see the baby hippo. So cute. And there were mountain lions, and I was trying. You know how if if, if you want to earn a cat's trust, you slow blink at them. Uh huh. That's like what they call the cat kiss. I was trying to slow blink at the mountain lions. Didn't really get me anywhere, but even I didn't decide I should pet the mountain lions. But there, there were also people there who were screaming at the tiger, which looked at them like they were delicious. Yeah. Why are you taunting the predator? It, just because it it looks like a big kitty, right? You know what the little kitties do? They murder everything in the neighborhood that they can. That's about their size. Not even the smaller. They will murder shit that's about as big as they are. Yeah. They want to eat you. You look delicious. And Americans, we're we're kind of chubby, a little. So yeah. we look extra delicious. I don't have to work hard to get you. No, you can't run fast, and you look delicious. <laughs> did, did the fucking jaguar look at? It was like, what? You look at me funny? Who you fucking think you are? You wanna say something? Huh? It's Florida. You know he's fucking good. Who antagonizes a fucking jaguar? Isn't that the football team down there? Yeah. Yeah. Is yeah. Was this, was this, what's his name, Mendoza? Yeah. Portals! You got nothing on Blake Bortles. All right, so our last one, I, I, I am, I'm set, I'm sorry I'm going to say this out loud, but this came to me and it's stuck in my head. This is an amazing fucking story. Um. And it's from Germany, and we have Nazis. We have actual fucking Nazis. What do you know? Um, well, Nazi adjacent, but um, I, I, I guess we have to call this one Hydra. We have to call this one Tanks for the Memories. Lawyers <laughs> argue <laughs> over fines after antique tank removed from pensioners' basement. Basement? How? While most pensioners do, they just build a house around it. Most pensioners spend their retirement vacationing. There are some who prefer to dedicate their time collecting war memorabilia. While seemingly harmless, these are oftentimes law governing such activity, especially when the items were used by the Nazis. As one German, Did Germany takes that kind of serious. As one German senior found out, such a collection can lead to legal troubles. The now 84-year-old pensioner, who lives in a wealthy suburb of uh, Heikendorf and Kiel, was found to have in his possession a 1943 Panzer tank, an 88 millimeter flak cannon, which is an anti-aircraft gun, a torpedo, 70 assault rifles, an unspecified number of semi and fully automatic pistols, and over 1,000 rounds of ammunition. 2005, local officials with the... Uh, Public order office were conducting an inspection of the home when they came across a collection of World War II memorabilia in his basement. Discussions regarding the license and legalities of the items occurred, and no action was taken to remove them. So, this was like 15 fucking years ago. Ten years later, authorities were tipped off after officials in Berlin searched the home for stolen Nazi art. During their search, they also came across a uh, bus of Hitler an Arno Brecker bronze statue of a nude man that was reportedly once outside Hitler's Reich Chancellery. 
mannequins outfitted in Nazi uniforms, swastika pendants, a V1 rocket replica, replica and SS rune shaped lamps. <laughs> Removal the items. Uh, it, just Jesus Christ. Um, I still want to know how he got a tank into the basement. At present, both sides are negotiating, negotiating possible penalties, including a suspended sentence and a fine of up to 500,000 euros. Decision expected to come in August 21st, uh, August 2021. Uh, the pensioner must find new homes for the items. According to his lawyer, a museum in the United States is interested in purchasing the tank. While a number of German collectors have expressed interest in purchasing the other items. I hope those are like official. Not like the bottom of a well. Yeah. Inside of a volcano. Mm -hmm. You had a fucking arsenal. Yeah, like that's that's not memorabilia. To remove it from the resident, soldiers used six armored engineering vehicles. The tanks were positioned at varying angles in the home's garden, and winches were used to lift the Panther onto a low loader for transport. How the fuck did you get this shit in your basement? Like this is if the old guy from Hot Fuzz was a Nazi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he says it's just a sea barn. Now picture he's a Nazi. <laughs> Not as charming. 70, a, a thousand rounds of an anti-aircraft gun. <laughs> the fuck are you doing? You want to take out Delta Airlines? The shit. I really, I'm stuck on how you got a tank in your basement, logistically and subtly. Because I feel like I would notice if my neighbors were moving a tank into their basement. Dark Angel Otaku says, fail Hydra! Yep. So <laughs> unless the home was literally built around it, I have some questions. Yeah, unlike America, Germany actually has laws about the whole Nazi thing. And you may find this a little hard to understand, but they have issues about it. They're they a don't really touchy. fuck with that shit. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's not like here where you can just wave a Confederate flag in upstate New York and all you might get is side eye because you don't know what side of the Mason Dixon you're on. Were you it's fucking, not like that there. Were you fucking holding dinner parties and like, hey, who wants to go play in the Nazi wing? I've got a bronze nude man that used to belong to Hitler. I would not go to dinner parties at that man's house. Because I have red hair. They didn't like my kind. They didn't like a lot. I of would be worried about being dinner at that man's house. Fucking hell. So, yeah, that, that's. And I love how someone found it in 2005 is just like, well. Mm -hmm. I mean, what are you going to do? Uh, yeah, yeah. The first the first thing we learned pretty much the first thing we learned this week is. If you're thinking about putting a tank in your basement. And it's Don't. not it, it's not something to do with water. Don't. It's don't. Get, get some help. Seriously. Talk to somebody about that. A fucking tank. A, just fucking in the basement. Just fuck. What the fuck? Wait, I said it. It's the. It's, if, you're, if you're thinking what your collection really needs is an anti aircraft gun, you probably shouldn't be allowed to live alone. I'm still stuck on the naked bronze statue that used to belong to Hitler. Was I it mean, hey, it's a shame Madison Cawthorn didn't hit this guy's house on his vacation. I don't care about your comments, so fuck you. Um, 
We, uh, we've learned that don't taunt the large predators. I don't know why he had to tell you that. This is something our ancestors learned hundreds of thousands of years ago because you it's know like how they- one of the first things we learned as a species that was like thing one that we learned you know how we learned it there used to there were eight people then suddenly there were seven that's how we learned it and a pile of gelatinous goo yeah. um we've learned that if you're getting arrested you might as well go for broke what have you got to lose maybe it'll work Maybe it won't. It probably won't. Um, we've learned maybe if there's an iguana in your toilet, don't wait three days to call some. <laughs> Kurt, can I use your bathroom? No. <laughs> yeah, you just got you got to pee around, Earl. <laughs> He doesn't like being peed on. Oh. It's real ornery. We learned if you're going to protest an organization, maybe you should get accurate. Check Google Maps. Even Google Maps. I, this is this is crazy. Even Google Maps will tell them the BBC is not there. You could have fucking been like, BBC. Hey, I don't think we're in the right place. And that's, I don't understand how these things happen when like all of us are carrying. Yep. A little tiny supercomputer with all of human knowledge yep. in our fucking pocket. Yep. You can be on your way to the protest to be like, where is the BBC? Hey guys, I think we're going the wrong way. Who are you gonna believe? Me or that stupid device? I guess that's true. I mean, you know. That's how it's got cults the work. microchip. Yeah, that's how cults work. And finally, we've learned um, you, you can show your ass. Doesn't matter if your dad's got $2 million, your ass getting duct taped to a seat. It, they don't play up there because there's nowhere to go. And if you're, you're acting. We, def- we can do about it. Yeah. Just, uh, you're a, you are a danger to everyone in the fucking tube in the sky that it's on a delicate balance. And if you fuck with it, it goes straight into the ground. And that's happened before, and people are a little touchy about it. We made movies about the whole thing. So, uh, hopefully... I'm going to fed the fuck up right now. Hmm. There's, flight attendants are also kind of fed the fuck yes. up right now. It's been a bit of a year for them. They are sick of these motherfucking douchebags on the motherfucking planes. <laughs> I bet you anything they're trying to get written to their union contract, the ability to kick people off mid-flight. 